welcome everyone. It's already the third session of today. Uh, this session will be about the future of cleaning technologies. And uh, it will be the speaker, Robin Temmerman and Thomas Hansen. So give them a big applause. Right. Thanks. I stay at the side. One, two. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Before we get started into this great new technology, is a bit kind of the philosophical question, right? What is Ecolab about? So if you ask me today, if you invest into RDNE in Ecolab, are you investing into research? Absolutely not, right? Our team is working on design and engineering. And what does it mean is that we try to solve always customer problems and that we for sure then also need to understand the customer needs first. So we are not a classical research organization. And what does it mean for my team is we go out to the customer, we sit together with customers, and we really need to try to understand what are their needs and what their problems. So we all know, for example, that we have stuff turnover on the customer side. So we're looking a lot of, lot of times now into training, how we can do that differently. We look into cleaning and disinfection and maintaining for sure, but we also look into system and methods, how we can control and how we can secure the proof of clean concept. And then on the other side also, we are sitting together with the customer and we try to understand what are their financial implications and how we can help them to improve the processes and how we can create additional value for the customer. If you're not doing that and not understanding that, my, um, my experience is then we are developing things for the market and which does not fit the customer and then the customer will not buy. So in the center of each development is really the customer. And then also, if you think about cleaning concepts, right, and what's happening currently in the market and, and how we can see that. So it, is, it should be pretty obvious if you clean regularly certain surfaces or floors that you have a low investment of clean and a low environmental impact because if you do regular cleaning, you can use lower concentration to achieve a cleaning outcome. So what happens if you do only cleaning once per month or once per week? You're getting soil everywhere, you're getting a kitchen, you get a fat, fat built up, on a toilet you get lime built up and these kind of things. What happens then is that at a certain moment you need to have tough chemistry and usually this tough chemistry also has a high environmental impact, right? So there's a direct link between how often do I clean and what is the environmental impact long term. And also what we're doing is we need to bring that into a concept. There's a total concept, so it's not just that we can take out one element like a chemistry, so for chemistry we need equipment, for equipment and chemistry we need to storage and transport, for this one and afterwards we need to dispose and collect, in some areas we need to wash and disinfect some, some cloths also, and then we are cleaning again. So it is really a closed loop concept what we are doing to secure a cleaning outcome. There's another, there's another thing what's happening um, in the last 10 years, and that will continue also in the next 10 years. It's called Green Deal. I think we all have heard about that, right? So what does Green Deal mean? Green Deal means there are certain regulations now which are implemented into the European um, countries. And interesting enough, if we read through that, so I have not read all of that, but most of, the, most of that, in a lot of cases, it's all about digitalization, right? There is a digital aspect, which means in the end, we need to make everything transparent. There's also the question about circularity. What does it mean? You bring something into the value chain and it should not go out again. Which also means if you bring something into the environment, it needs to have a positive impact until the end. The third one is climate neutrality. So a lot of companies are referring this one to CO2 neutrality. So what does it mean to be CO2 neutral? So Ecolab, we have also a goal to be CO2 neutral until 2050. Do we believe or do I believe that we can technically achieve that? No. Absolutely not. We will have always CO2 which we are producing, but the trend is we need to minimize. But we can only minimize if we work together with our customers and with some partners and we can do it in a joint effort. It's not possible that someone can do it alone. And then there's a topic about toxic free environment, which there are different interpretations or different legislation. So there's a huge question also, what does, what does that mean? So if we ask our customers, what means toxic free environment for them? Some are saying, okay, I want to have innovation for safer products. If you then ask them what means safer products, a couple of them are saying, oh, I want to ban all the toxic chemicals. Some others are saying, if I use it, 
I want to limit the exposure. And then there are others saying, okay, for me, it means to save up products, comply with legislation, and also simplify the procedures. So the question is how we are reacting to that, right? It's not, we cannot go in one direction. I think we need to, to cover different, different aspects here. But what we need to do is, and that is a huge difference to all of the things what we had before, we need to change our ships in the, in the way that we are saying, how can we secure an environmental control? How can we move from a cleaning market into a control market in all the aspects, right? And it's also not so easy to say what is right and what is wrong, because that also depends from each person. So what we have done as an organization is we are looking for new technologies where we believe that this has a long-term impact for the environment, which gives long-lasting effects, and also how we can secure to secure a little bit, or not a little bit, but a lot the, envir the environment, securing a cleaning outcome. And how that can work or one of the emerging technologies, I will now hand over to Robin, who will explain you a little bit what they have done over the past 20 years. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, as Thomas said, um, I'm going to give you a very brief uh, explanation, introduction to a good example of a technology that covers uh, several aspects of new trends, uh, sustainability, safety at work, efficacy, which is of course still uh, very important, solving um, issues we have with older technologies, uh, like we all know the Green Deal and the, the trend to, um, to, to use less toxic chemicals. So one of the examples um, that we developed, we started developing that 21 years ago already, that's when we did our first tests, that's the symbiotic cleaning. Symbiotic cleaning is actually um, a next generation of probiotic cleaning, and I'm happy to see, I've been walking around of course, that after so many years of development, um, working also with the regulators uh, to, to make uh, room for new technologies and regulations. I'm happy to see that I identified at least already uh, a dozen colleagues, companies in the industry that now come with probiotic uh, cleaning technology. So finally, the technology which we already know for 21 years is finding its way. Huh? Now, we have been working on that. We keep working on that, improving it, uh, validating it. Um, and as I said, as a a next generation probiotic cleaning, we developed a symbiotic cleaning, which is in fact still probiotic cleaning product. So you have your standard chemical composition. Yeah, you still have chemistry in these products, which is of course sustainable, biodegradable uh, chemistry, like most of uh, the colleagues have nowadays. You add probiotic bacteria to it. I'll explain a little bit later on how, what they do. So you have the probiotic bacteria in the product as an additional ingredient. And on top of that, prebiotic sugars. And these prebiotic sugars, they will act as a booster, a stimulator for the probiotics to work faster, to work longer, and also to motivate beneficial microorganisms that you have on a surface to develop, to create a more healthy, stable surface microbiome which is becoming more and more important in overall hygiene and infection control, certainly in healthcare. Now for cleaning, and I think probably with you all being um, uh, experts in the industry, you will have heard already about probiotic cleaning products. And the technology is very simple. You have the probiotic bacteria in your product. You apply the product, you apply it like any other cleaning product. There's no different methodology that you need. You can apply it with trigger bottle, wipe, floor scrubbing, whatever. You apply the product and you leave a layer of bacteria, of probiotics behind on the surface. They will immediately sense, so they activate because of the prebiotic booster, they activate in about 30 minutes and they start screening the surface for the type of organic pollution that you have on a surface. Can be fats, proteins, sugars, whatever. Grout, biofilm, there's always a lot of organic pollution on a surface, even if it's not visible anymore. Take a microscope, put it on a surface, and you will always find organic pollution, microscopic dirt. The probiotics will immediately sense, okay, 
this, this and this pollution I can use as a food source, they start producing enzymes, uh, so they wake up. They start producing enzymes, they excrete the enzymes, they start digesting this organic pollution, and then the probiotics, they absorb it, they you can use it as a food source to stay alive, to maintain themselves. And as they go, while doing that, gradually, you lower the amount of organic pollution, and not after one application. Sometimes it may take several weeks to get rid of, like, grout, biofilm. It uh, can take a couple of weeks, but eventually the probiotics, because they keep working for four or five days, or even longer when there's a lot of food available, they remove all the organic pollution. And on a microscopic level, at a given moment, you will end up with a, a very clean surface. This is a good example. So, for instance, this is a graph uh, of the cut-through of a surface where you have in the cracks and in the pores the black, that's the grout, that's the, the biofilm, where inside you have all kinds of microorganisms, good microorganisms, bad ones, and that's a very, can be very complex. If you use a regular cleaning product, here, it only works superficial. Uh, the, the, the chemicals, they cannot penetrate into this biofilm, into the, into the microscopic dirt, so they do not affect it. They only remove superficial dirt. And then we had already in the, the 80s, we had enzyme-based cleaners, uh, so cleaning products to which enzymes were added. That was already a good start. It was actually the initiation of what we now develop, the probiotic and the symbiotic cleaning products. So the enzymes that you intentionally added as an ingredient to the cleaning products, they were already capable of starting to digest the organic microscopic dirt that you have on surfaces. But they don't work very long. If their activity is two, three hours, they're gone. We all know there are some limitations uh, for spraying, potentially allergic reactions. So there were a couple of downsides uh, on working with enzymes. So that's where we came with the probiotic and symbiotic technology. There's no enzymes anymore. They are replaced with the probiotics and the prebiotics. And these probiotics, the bacteria, they can actually infiltrate into the microscopic pores of a surface because they just join their companions. They just join the rest of the microbiology. They penetrate and they start digesting, eating away the microscopic dirt from inside out. And then after, depending on how much dirt you have, how long it's there, sometimes it can be a layer of many years old. It can take a couple of weeks, but eventually it clears up. All the black organic pollution is removed, it's digested. So you end up with a microscopic clean surface, which very often you can then see Visually, it, start, it becomes noticeable. This is an example of a test done in a fast food restaurant in the US, where you have these typical black grout joints eh, on the floor, sticky floors, greasy. And then after two weeks of symbiotic cleaning, here, you see that it clears up. So the, whole, the black is being removed, it's being digested. And by the normal way of cleaning, with a floor scrub or manual mopping, you then take away the leftovers of the dirt. And as you can see, so the, the cleaning effect of the, the symbiotic cleaning is much better compared to conventional detergents. So it's a very biological, fully biological, of course, eh? probiotics, natural microorganisms, prebiotics coming uh, from chicory extracts, sugars. So all biological uh, materials, substances that we use. So you end up with a much more effective cleaning. And then, of course, it's a matter of continuing to prevent the return of organic pollution. Yeah? So you need this transition phase. Give it a couple of weeks to transform, to do the removal of the microscopic organic pollution. But once it's gone, your surface stays very clean, as long as you keep using, of course, the symbiotic technology. It has additional benefits. We're not going into detail. Everybody who wants to know more about it can visit us at the Ecolab booth uh, for more information. But anyhow, it is very uh, active in odor control. Uh, it has positive uh, influences, like on the drains, the wastewater, things like that. It's all very well documented. We did a lot of clinical trials. 
most of them way too boring to present to you. Yeah? So uh, who wants, everyone wants to know, who is certainly the people active in healthcare, very valuable technology in healthcare uh, institutions. Robin did now a fantastic job in explaining how the, how the system works, all the potential, what we have with that. So now, how does it fill this equal up, right? Why do we do this partnership program? Robin said they have 21 years of experience in, in the area of this development. Ecolab has 100 years of experience in serving customer, doing improvement of processes at the customer side, and creating additional value together with our customers, and also going the next level of sustainability, right? That is our mission statement, and when we came together and we have looked into that, we thought, okay, that is a perfect fit now, it's a perfect merge, because now it's the time to implement the technology. So how does it work in reality? So at a certain moment, in the center of all this process is still our territory manager, right? He needs to go out, he needs to work with our customers, he needs to understand their processes, and then we need to see together how we can implement that technology into these accounts. Will there be limitations which we will discover? Probably yes. Will it solve all of our problems? Probably not. But if we do not start and we do not figure out how that in future how that looks like, we will never, never change into the ambitious targets also of the European Commission, which means climate neutrality, which means toxic-free environment. And we need to start now, otherwise it's too late.